To a lot of non-fans, NASCAR has a reputation for being low tech and a little bit crude. And boy, can I relate. The stereotypical image that pops into the layman's head when they think of NASCAR might not illustrate the sophistication out there on the track. To win in NASCAR, the drivers, teams, and engineers, they need to understand race car physics, especially aerodynamics. That understanding has resulted in types of drafting that don't appear in many other motorsports. So today, we're gonna break down NASCAR drafting and explain how drivers even use the air itself against their competition. Didn't think that we could break down the science of the shake and bake, did ya? Did ya, Bruce? You didn't think we could? Well, guess what, mother I'm doing it, baby! Thank you to Off The Record for sponsoring today's video. Now this weekend is Labor Day, and you know what that means. I'm talking grilling burgers, playing cornhole, and getting speeding tickets. Oh, what? Oh, you don't like speeding tickets? Well, then you need Off The Record app installed on your phone and at the ready. With a 97% success rate, they offer a network of attorneys to fight your ticket, and even will get a refund if they can't reduce or keep it off your record entirely. So have a worry-free holiday and register now. Use code DONUT and say 10% off your first ticket at offtherecord.com slash donut. Now drafting means using someone else's aerodynamic effect to your benefit. It's used in all sorts of racing, even cycling and running. The, well, you'll often see slipstreaming. That's when someone follows directly behind a competitor to avoid fighting the wind and to conserve energy. But in NASCAR, slipstreaming is just the beginning. Winning drivers need to know multiple drafting techniques and how to defend against them. There's the slingshot, the bump draft, the two-car tandem, the side draft, and even the shake and bake. These all build off of each other, and once you know how they work, watching NASCAR takes on a whole new level. And they're all based on just a few fundamentals of race car aerodynamics. Aerodynamics is about how moving objects produce changes in the air, and how changes in the air move objects. One of the most important concepts is the pressure differential. If an object has different air pressure on either side, that pressure differential exerts force against the object that moves it towards the area of lower pressure. The only way to resist that movement is by applying some other opposing force. Moving cars create pressure differentials which they have to overcome, and the force needed to do that comes from the engine. So as a car moves, it pushes air out of the way, but that air doesn't move instantaneously. The air gets bunched up or compressed in front of the car, and this this creates a high pressure area. The same movement also creates a low pressure area behind the car because it takes time for air to fill in the space the car has just left. So you got high pressure in front, you got low pressure out back. That is a pressure differential. Now to help visualize high and low pressure areas, I've built me a little wind tunnel. Now we have fog that's coming in through this box and it's funneling in through these straws. It's creating laminar airflow that's pulled in by a fan here on the back. And we got a little stocky here to see where it hits the card. Now the front, that's the high pressure areas. That's where the front of your car is hitting here and it's producing that high pressure pocket. And in the back, you can see the air is tumbling. It's falling off. That's the low pressure area. You can even start seeing it come across the roof line and get spoiled by the spoiler on the back. And if you thought, oh, Jerry built a mini wind tunnel for just this one demonstration, oh no, I'm gonna start wind tunnel testing all sorts of items. We've already put other weird stuff in it like this, and this, and this, and my personal favorite, this. <laughs> Send me anything literally anything and it'll go in the donut wind tunnel. Moving into the area of higher pressure uses power from the engine. As speed increases, so does the pressure differential because the car's gotta push more air out of the way. That means more air resistance or pressure drag and even more power to overcome it. At a certain speed, the car simply doesn't have enough power to overcome the increased drag and it reaches its aerodynamically limited or drag limited top speed. To go as fast as possible, it seems like you'd want a car that creates almost no drag. And that's true if you're doing high speed runs over at Bonneville Salt Flats. But there's a reason why many speed record cars end up airborne. Reducing drag often requires removing downforce. Downforce is negative lift and a race car wing works like an airplane wing flipped upside down. It creates high pressure on top and low pressure underneath, a pressure differential that pushes the car down. 
This is what makes a wing different from a spoiler. Spoilers don't produce negative lift. They slow the air as it reaches the back of the car. Now what wings and spoilers have in common is that they both change the speed and path of the air, and the air resists that change, exerting force against the car, or yet more drag. That means the price of downforce is increased air resistance and reduced top speed. But the benefit includes increased grip, cornering speed, and high speed stability that prevents takeoff if something upsets the car's balance. If you're on a racetrack where you have to turn, a little bit of downforce goes a long way to improving lap times. If you want to know more about race car aerodynamics, you should check out this episode of Bumper to Bumper on the Bugatti Bullied. And while you're there, go and click that like and subscribe. That really helps us out. Thank you. If you've hit your top speed and still want to go faster, you can increase power to deal with increased drag. But race cars like a NASCAR Cup car are often already producing as much power as they can. If they want to go faster, the only option is to reduce drag. And you can do that by changing the car's texture or shape, essentially making the car more slippery so it slides smoothly through the air instead of trying to muscle air out of its way. Have you ever tried to muscle air? It's tough. Muscled air. <laughs> You can see this kind of drag reduction in cars with active aerodynamics that close off vents or lower the rear wing as speeds increase. But NASCAR doesn't have any of that fancy stuff. If you're a NASCAR driver and you want last drag, you have to take advantage of another car's aerodynamic effect, and that is slipstream. To slipstream, a driver places their car directly behind another car. The lead car has to push through the air, fighting against the high pressure area it's creating, while the trailing car lets them do most of the work. The trailing car driver slips along in the low pressure stream left behind the car in front of it, and that pressure differential draws the car forward. That's why slipstreaming is sometimes called getting a tow. The trailing car experiences less drag and needs less power to maintain the same speed as the front car. That means in a slipstream, the trailing car has power to spare and could achieve a higher top speed. But that leaves both drivers with a decision to make. The trailing driver could stay a few feet back and just match the front car speed. One benefit of simply matching speed is that it conserves fuel. That can make a huge difference in a long race, even if it's not especially exciting to watch. If the lead car doesn't like doing someone else's aerodynamic work, it can try to move left or right to send more air at the trailing car and break the toe. But the trailing car can often shadow those moves well enough to stay in the low pressure wake and catch back up. But matching speed is a risky strategy in a race with 40 cars because two other drivers might make a different decision that will make both of their cars go faster. That's the two car tandem. To initiate a tandem, the trailing car uses its extra speed to get right on the rear bumper of the lead car, closing the gap. The rear car no longer has to push any air out of its way, greatly reducing its drag. But this also fills in the low pressure area behind the lead car, nearly eliminating that source of drag and allowing the front car to go faster. That's one reason why a lead driver might not want to break a toe. Aerodynamically, the two car tandem becomes a single object. The front car is dealing with all the high pressure drag in the front, and the trailing car is dealing with all the low pressure drag at the back. So this ultimately reduces the total drag on both cars, allowing both to achieve a higher top speed as long as they work together. And there's still one more trick available in the tandem, and that's the bump draft. This is something that the driver of the trailing car has to decide to do. The rear car can delicately ram the front car, pushing up on its rear bumper to speed it up. This works because even though both cars are aerodynamically linked, the trailing car is dealing with less drag than the lead car, so it still has power on tap to achieve a slightly higher top speed. So by pushing the front car, the rear car is using its extra power to increase the speed in tandem, benefiting both cars. The two-car tandem is used frequently in NASCAR, even by rivals, because the speed increase from working together can be enough to run away from a pack where everyone is jockeying for position. But there are downsides for both drivers too. The driver of a trailing car in a slipstream or a two-car tandem has to work harder than the lead driver. Partially, that's because it's difficult to match speed and bump draft carefully. But the big downside for the rear car is that they lose the air that creates downforce, and this can lead to aero push. Downforce helps a car maintain grip while turning, and push is just another term for understeer. As a two-car tandem goes around a corner or even changes its position on the racetrack, the front car has all of its downforce available for turning, but the rear car, it has much less. The trailing driver has to work harder to stay directly behind the front car, because if they can't remain centered, they may break their own toe and lose the slipstream. 
And that's when you see everybody go past. And he's like, oh, don't leave me, Dad. Are you hungry for more High Low merch? Well, have I got a shirt for you. Yoda's Tacos. They're the dirtiest tacos around. Get it in black. Get it in white. Or get them both, because they're only $29.99 at DonutMedia.com. If you don't get the joke already, go back to school. But <laughs> Toyota, Tacoma, Yoda's Tacos, they're the trucks we drive on high low. I really like this design. Uh, more to come, DonutMedia.com. As long as the front car is relying on the extra speed they're getting from the tandem, they may be polite about their turning to make it easier for the rear car to stay with them. But NASCAR isn't a contest to see who can be the best friends. That's what pickleball's for. It's a race and eventually somebody's gonna win. The front driver in a tandem knows that their trailing car isn't just their helpful companion. That car is also their closest competition and eventually they're gonna try the slingshot. That's how it is. Your best friends always turn into your best enemies. Life lesson. They also become your best lovers sometimes too. <laughs> a trailing car might initiate a tandem so they can get ahead of the pack, but if they wanna win, they're gonna have to get ahead of the lead car too. On high-speed courses like Talladega, the slingshot is reserved for the very end of the race. That's when the trailing car, instead of using its extra power to speed up the lead car with a bump, will dive out from behind the leader and attempt to pass. They'll have a little speed boost to help initiate the move, and moving out from behind the front car recreates that low-pressure drag behind it, further slowing down the front car. The passing car's speed boost from slipstreaming may not be quite enough to take the lead because the car has just exposed itself to all that high pressure drag it's been hiding while behind in tandem. But the passing driver still has one more trick they can pull off, the side draft. Remember that rear spoiler we were talking about? The one that reduces low pressure drag behind the car, but also creates a little drag of its own? Well, if the passing driver can keep the front of their car close to the other car while they pass, some of the air that the passing car is displacing gets dumped up and onto the rear spoiler of the front car. That creates even more drag, further slowing the lead car so the trailing car can't complete the pass. So what do you do if you've been leading a two car tandem, your good old buddy behind you slipstream and bump drafting, sacrificing his downforce, dealing with aero push to get both of you ahead of the pack, but you want to avoid the slingshot in the side draft to take the win. Well, you shake and bake, baby. Look, a lot of things will get NASCAR fans and even drivers yelling shake and bake, a reference to the film in Talladega Nights. Now, the shake and bake in the film Talladega Nights is really the slingshot. The real shake and bake happened in 2012 with Brad Keselowski and Kyle Busch. Drivers Brad Keselowski and Kyle Busch used every technique here, and Keselowski took the win by doing something nobody had seen before. The NASCAR race at Talladega Super Speedway used to force the cars to run with limited power to keep speeds down. The idea was to make the race safer, but it also meant aerodynamic techniques like the ones we've been talking about were even more important. In the final three laps of the 2012 race, Keselowski and Busch formed a two-car tandem with Busch slipstreaming and bump drafting the pair forward into the lead, while also fighting aero push through every turn. The tandem technique for passing a pack is a pretty common move, but everybody knew that at Talladega, the car in first place going into the final lap usually got passed by the trailing car using a slingshot and a side draft. If you're the trailing car, that move has to be timed just right, somewhere around the back straight, or the car you pass can slipstream and slingshot you right back, retaking the league before the finish. Keselowski knew that Bush was waiting for just the right moment to make his move. So on the final lap, going into the back straight, Keselowski shook him off. Keselowski moved right for just a moment, and that move broke the tandem, creating a low-pressure drag that slowed Keselowski, but also shoving a bunch of air in Bush's face, breaking the toe. The extra high-pressure drag Bush had to contend with from the unexpected movement that Keselowski was able to pull off a small lead. But for that lead to stick, the timing had to be perfect. Bush immediately ducked back into Keselowski's wake and with the extra speed from the slipstream, started catching up. Fortunately for Keselowski, with just one turn to go, there wasn't enough race left for Bush to attempt another slingshot. Keselowski held onto the lead and won the race. Afterwards, Keselowski said he'd come up with the move months earlier, even dreaming about it. So if he was ever in that position in the last lap at Talladega, he knew exactly what to do. Because he shook Bush off with that little side move and made a charge for the finish, commentators called it the shake and bake. So there you have it, Bruce. 
the drafting techniques that make NASCAR strategy complicated and fascinating at the same time. But all of these moves can change next year because there are new cars coming for 2022. And we covered the NASCAR Next Gen project in another episode, so go watch that if you wanna learn more. A lot of the new changes are aerodynamic, and some of those are designed to make the cars have less of an aerodynamic impact on the other cars around them. Maybe the side draft won't work as well as it did before. Maybe the shake and bake will be dead forever. It's pretty hard to say, but we will see in a couple years when we go wheel to wheel racing in NASCAR. Yee! Yee! Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of B2B. Hit that like and subscribe. That really helps us out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Follow us here at Donut on Instagram at Donut Media. Follow me at Jeremiah Burton. Until next week, bye for now.